Good morning everybody, it's Tom Christie back in the painting studio and before we get started with this video, if you haven't hit the subscribe button, please do that. Uh, I would ask you to do that if you're willing because it's free, it doesn't cost anything, uh, but it does help me out if you hit that subscribe button. And I appreciate all the feedback, the positive feedback on the channel. It's very encouraging to me to hear from people all over the U.S., Canada, but also the world uh, that are getting some value out of these videos and uh, getting joy out of carving wildfowl, which is what this channel is all about. I want to encourage people to give it a try. And uh, it's something that I have enjoyed for over 30 years as a hobby. I had a career in manufacturing, but this was a great hobby uh, on top of that. And now in retirement, it uh, it gives me activity and I love to do it. So I, again, I just want to share this and encourage people to give it a try because I think you'll really enjoy it. Okay, enough on that. And this is uh, a video today uh, on a bufflehead hen. So I'm working on some other projects that I can't post on my YouTube channel right now. Uh, for final approach, there is a buck walking through the backyard. There he goes. Check it out, folks. Live from Nebraska. That That is a very rare thing, so I, I had to stop and show you that. That is very cool. All right, well, that was a thrill, as you might imagine. I, I see turkeys walking through the backyard. Uh, I'm very blessed to live in a place that wild turkeys walk through. Rarely do we get deer walking through, but almost never do I see a buck. And that wasn't the greatest buck in the world, but the biggest thrill for me, and I wanted to share that with you. Back to the video. Uh, this is the bufflehead hen. You may not be doing a bufflehead hen right now, but my goal is to add to this uh, library, and people can tap into this uh, when they're working on a bufflehead hen, and just see how I do it. There are many, many ways of painting a bufflehead hen, but hopefully this video will be helpful to you and show you one way to do it. So let's get right to the painting, now that we've had the excitement of the wild life walking through the backyard. Gonna use straight Josanya burnt umber to paint the head just a very dark shade of brown while that head mix is still wet I'm going to take a little of the uh, darker gray value that's nimbus gray with a little bit of burnt umber and a touch of carbon black I'll use it to put some highlights on the head I'm using this little, still using this little scrubber or chisel shaped half inch brush. And the lower side of the head here tends to have a little gray value to it. And then I'm letting it stay dark down at the bottom. I'm going to highlight the head and also the side of the crown. This is that gray dark gray mix i'm going to speed up the video here and you can just watch this blending process this takes a while to get a nice soft blend and get the color value i'm looking for so we'll kind of skip through this but i just wanted you to see this underway just leaving the neck area dark also the top of the crown and the back of the head Now I'm doing a second round of highlighting. I've added a little Nimbus Gray to burnt umber, and I've got a little soft Filbert scrubber, and I'm lightening the cheeks a little bit. Just more blending uh, to give, give it a little more character and lighten the look. Again, leaving the top of the head, the neck, and the back dark. 
And I want to put that little face patch on and I'm just referring to my reference from the pattern and use the chalk pencil to kind of sketch in that cheek patch on either side. And then I'm using off-white, which is the gesso with a little bit of um, raw umber in it. And this little filbert and just filling that in and keeping the edges of this patch soft so we don't have any hard lines. And then I'm going back with a, a very small scrubber, uh, burnt umber mixed with Nimbus Gray, so kind of this highlight color and I'm just using that to scrub along the margins of this to soften that and make sure there's a nice soft look to the patch overall before we start detailing later. I use the breast base color, which was uh, Nimbus Gray with raw umber and then warm white added to lighten that. And use my detail brush and begin to pull in some lines across this neckline. All right, now we'll work on putting some life in the head. And I've got uh, pure burnt umber on the detail brush. And remember we highlighted the cheeks a bit earlier. So I'm gonna pull some feather flow lines through that area, starting down at the base of the neck, coming up and over the cheek and kind of interlocking fashion. These need to be really fine. And what we're trying to simulate here is how the feathers are grouped together and laying and flowing across the head. So down below these are coming up in the cheek area. And they're going to tie into this white patch up above Get a little more water. You need to have a pretty fluid mix on your paint, so more water so that these are thin and that there's no um, globs of paint coming off or broken lines. You want these to be kind of continuous. So I'm heading up to this patch and then we'll do some detail there. So that's very subtle right now, but we'll add some darkness and lightness to it later. I'm going to go up and around the crown up above. These kind of start angling down towards the eye. This is a repetitive process, so I've got the film sped up here so we can watch you can see coming over the crown and kind of angling down towards the eye and then eventually towards the, the bill. And we'll go back to the cheek. Those kind of angle up towards the eye and around the eye and then meet up with the bill up front. I'm putting in a few marks into the white patch there just to start to tie into that white patch with these flow lines. stop here and give you a quick look at where we stand with just the burnt umber first pass. Now kind of following those flow guidelines I'm just again pulling some of these burnt umber lines up into the white patch on both sides so that we have a little 
transition starting there. Now I've added some carbon black to that burnt umber, and I want to start down below here at the neckline, kind of tie into these marks too much water. If you get too much water, you're going to lay too much paint on or a puddle. You probably guys know that, but So I'm just kind of going between some of those other lines and darkening this area down by the neck a bit and putting some flow lines up into the face so that we have some interest in that neck area as well. I'm going to speed the video up again so you can kind of see more of the process quicker. And I'm just using that carbon black again along the back, kind of working off a center line of the back of the head and then tying into those burnt upper marks that we've already put in place. Just kind of fading out the carbon black and making it thin, very thin as I go around the, the crown. But this way we get a little texture look to the top of the head, even though it's still very dark up there. And then I'm pulling those down through and into the burnt umber just a little bit. And next we'll come back with a lighter value and do some highlights between the dark marks. All right, I've got those dark carbon black flow lines in. Now I want to take back to a mix of the original head highlight, which is Nimbus Gray, raw umber, some burnt umber, and a little bit of carbon black and kind of going in between some of these flow lines. I've got to adjust this color so it is light enough to show up and not so light that it's too stark. So I'm going in between some of these other flow lines and just putting some highlight flow lines. And I want to highlight this cheek area under the eye patch because it tends to be a little grayer down here than the crown. I'll speed the video up again so we can watch the progress. You can see I'm just focused on that cheek area and then uh, not going now, down into the dark neck. Now I'm going to hit the face, the cheeks, put a little bit of a highlight in that area as well. And then the side of the crown up above to give that a little bit of highlight. Make things pop a little bit more. Now I've got some white gesso and uh, I want to put some highlights in the cheek patch and just kind of following these flow lines and doing some overlapping and interlocking lines that line up with this flow that we already put in place and uh, this will just give a little more depth to this cheek patch so it's not just one color, it's got some highlight to it. And I can pull some of the white into that brown to soften things a bit. Hopefully you can see that. 
in the video. Taking a little burnt umber and a thin wash and just washing that over the, the top of the head here and leaving this cheek area kind of gray. The reference I'm looking at, the head is nice, rich brown, and then it kind of goes gray as you go down the face. So that just pulls this together a little bit more, gives this a little bit of brown hint, and uh, it's looking pretty good. Just to finalize the cheek patch, I've got a little off-white and a detail brush, and I'm just going back and cleaning things up and pulling a little, a few lines up into the brown and just making sure everything is nice and clean and soft in both directions. For the bill base coat, I'm using white with uh, raw umber touch of cobalt blue, a little carbon black to give us this kind of slate gray color with a hint of blue. I'm using a little filbert brush here. It gives me good control up near the face. I'm going to paint it that base color, top and bottom. And I want to put a little bit of a darker shade close to the face. So I'm going to mix in a little burnt umber. And while this is still wet, I'm going to use that also a touch of carbon black just to gray that up a bit. I'm going to paint that up near the face. Same brush here. And then kind of fade that into the lighter value as you go out. Wet on wet blending with acrylics can be a little tricky. It's not as nice of a blend as you get with oils, but you can do it. You just take some work, keep going back and forth and blending it out. I just added a touch of white and cobalt blue to that previous mix to lighten it somewhat and I'm painting that on with a little filbert and kind of again wet on wet blending that to lighten the tip and put a little contrast between the base of the bill here and the tip. Now I'll use the detail brush carbon black Paint in the nostrils carefully. And also the nail is carbon black. Okay, I finished the bird up by spraying it with Tester's Dull Coat and then put a little bit of gloss on the bill with Deft Semi-Gloss. And uh, the bird is done. I really like the way she turned out. All right, that's a wrap on painting the bufflehead hen head. I hope that's helpful to you. 
you got the bonus of a uh, Mutual of Omaha Marlon Perkins Wild Kingdom moment with that buck walking through the backyard. I'm still still amazed at that and happy to have that on film. I can show that to my family and they won't believe it. Anyway, until next time, Tom Christie signing out. Good carving to you, good painting to you.